Hey guys, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and today I'll be playing the 5 minute blitz with 0 seconds increment on Lee Chess. And during the game, I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always, making sure that there's something to be taken away from the game for sure that helps you improve your game to the next level. Now before we start off with the game, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So yeah, let's start off with the game and see how it goes. What pieces we get here? Got the black pieces. I'll play the Karukan defense, which starts with c6, followed by d5. Solid opening for black. I've done multiple videos on the Karukan. Uh, you can go check them out for sure. Bishop on f5, an active square for the bishop in the Karukan defense. Now uh, pawn to e6, and then you can develop the knight first on f6. Ask for a bishop exchange if, you, if the opponent wants to. Doesn't, it's okay. Because we can play, move like... Knight here loses the bishop uh, with the tactic. So I have to be careful with that. If I play the pawn forward, then probably comes in with the bishop, so I'll defend that. So next, what we can do here is um, probably play the knight or pawn forward. Let's play pawn forward. That weakens up his structure if he takes. Doesn't. I can now play queen on c7. The battery will always be helpful. Uh, let's close the situation. I don't want him to open this up. And he wants that to happen. Okay. Can play a knight. Asking for knight exchange. Which he doesn't again. We get to hop in with the knight onto a5. We'll plant a knight on the c3 next, which he's denying again. So we can go on with the other knight. So that knight exchange happens. We can take back with the bishop. Bishop will be eyeing the king side always. Nice square for the bishop. Complicated opening. Looks like right. But it's pretty much solid if you see. Though the king is in the center, you don't mind it. And see, the fork comes now. After he takes with the queen, knight on b3 is a fork, which can't be defended. We will take on the rook here mostly. Just double checking everything once. Yep, let's take. Okay. Good time to kick the knight now. Goodbye, knight. Knight goes back. And then we take on the bishop. Let's take the bishop. Exchange stuff when you're ahead in the game. To make it simple. I had a video on this. I would like you to see that as well. So I'll place the link in the description and on the top as well. For your reference. Taking on the knight makes sense to me. I can hold on as well. Let's castle now. See, delaying the castling, but pretty good with it. He tries to save the knight now, which is okay. He can go for pawn break. If he does, opens up the f file. If he doesn't, then proceed with the pawn. We can take with the bishop. It's going to be helpful. Takes. Okay, we can take with the queen. Uh, no threats, right? No threats, no threats. No threats. No discord attacks. Okay, let's exchange the queens if he wants to. Offering queen exchange to the opponent. Because I'm ahead in the game. And if he doesn't, I'm going to take on this bishop first. 
So, okay, he does accept it. Takes with the rook. Okay, we can exchange the rooks as well if you want. And it's rook versus knight in the end game. How many times you are okay playing this? I am okay playing this 10 out of 10. Okay, let's take king to the center. Gets the knight, but knight isn't doing much over there. Okay, where's the knight going? To take the pawn. So let's defend. Okay, this is uh, pure calculation based here. I can offer him pawn exchange if he wants to. He does. I take back. My pawn structure is pretty solid there. Nothing to be bothered about. I can play pawn up as well. He goes back. Oh, he got the pawn there. You're okay here? After he now takes the pawn, he loses the pawn as well, probably. Yep, that's losing on the b2. Can he defend that? I doubt. Once we go in with the rook, we have to take, gobble up some pawns and then we are good. We can just promote to queen. Okay. Oh, that's a fork. If I take on the pawn, that's nicely played by the opponent. Let's give him some credit for that and save our pawn as well. Now there's no folk happening. Next move, I'm going to take on the pawn. So he has to move the pawn. Nice move there by the opponent. Well played. Now I can take. Okay, and Pasan, take the pawn, attack the knight, take another pawn. Knight has only got one square here. Which he finds, is there a folk coming? I doubt. That comes with a check, that's a folk for him. He will can I take on the knight here. I would love to, but it's okay. Let's play solid. King over here, his knight, his king is pinned still. I can now take. And that's winning. Just now the pawn promotion and queen. So yeah, uh, pretty solid uh, as always with the Karokan defense. Oh, I had played this opponent earlier as well once. And he got the better of me last time. So revenge is what we have got here. Always feel happy once I do that. All right, uh, let's start off with the game analysis once quickly and see how it went. So started with queen spawn opening d4. I played c6. Then he plays h3, making sure he takes away the g4 from the bishop. I play h5. Oh, sorry, I play d5 after c6, going for the center. Opponent develops the knight on f3. I bring the bishop on f5. Standard moves in the Karokan. Uh, the other bishop comes out on f4. But for the opponent, I develop uh, pawn to e6. That's more uh, likely kind of a London system setup. Instead, he just played h3 early. Then he plays pawn to e3. Uh, and we play knight f6. Yep, that's completely London system setup where you connect the knights uh, by placing them on... Uh, F3 and D2 respectively. I play the London system as well regularly. So I'll post the link of that as well in the description below and on the top so that you can check out and improve your London system setup as well. Uh, now bishop to D6, offering him bishop exchange. He brings in the knight to E5, a very good controlling square in the London system for the knight. And now I play pawn to A6. Passive move, uh, you can say it, but that was so that if I next play c5, 
his bishop doesn't come on b5 and give a check. So next move I play c5. He doesn't take. Uh, and so even I didn't. I just played queen to c7, uh, making this lovely battery uh, towards the bishop eventually uh, and the king side, uh, the opponent castles on the king side. Generally, when you are playing the London system setup, I suggest uh, people playing for queen side castling and pushing these pawns forward for the attack rather than just wasting them uh, defending the king because you have played the London system setup and queen side of the opponent is already opened up. So you can definitely attack on the king side. That's what opponent misses here and probably play, pays the price eventually. I went for c4, trying to go for some queen side game uh, attack over there. He plays a4. I respond with knight to c6. His knight comes on f3 now uh, and I bring the knight on a5. Before castling, I don't want to castle that early. I want to just maneuver my pieces and find the right squares for the uh, for my pieces. And here knight comes on e4 and he doesn't take surprisingly here. I was expecting him to take uh, because if he takes, that's still okay position for him because after I take, he can push my uh, bishop for backwards as well uh, by playing pawn and probably go for some pawn break as well in the center. After I take, he takes... Uh, Things get exchanged up, but the position is okay for the opponent. He's not losing out on stuff. Uh, he can just move queen aside so that there's no folk coming in the future. So, yeah, this situation is pretty much solid here, I would say. He can offer bishop exchange as well in the next move. Uh, so, things look fine, but rather uh, he made some inaccuracy in the game by just moving his rook uh, on c1. That's a bad move. I take on the knight, and after he takes... Um, the knight comes with a nasty folk, takes on the uh, rook there, uh, opponent takes with the queen. And now we just try to kick the knight away, knight goes back. We take on the bishop because you want to always exchange stuff when you are ahead in the game so that to simplify the situation. I have a video on that as well, I'll place the link in the description again. Uh, he takes, uh, I just bring the bishop now on e4. And the opponent gets rook on e1, but it's too late. I just castle now. So king is also safe. Now I went for the pawn break on e5. He takes, I take back. Another pawn exchange happening. I take with the queen. And now he plays bishop f3. If even a uh, pawn over here, there's nothing much to be worried because we can bring back the bishop because queen is not in direct attack. Yes, he might win another pawn there by doing this tactic, but nothing beyond that so we are still winning 1.7 is decent enough advantage to convert and in, into a win so that is one other thing which uh, he just taking the opponent away from the game uh, completely not giving him any chances but instead he played bishop to f3 and i respond with queen to f4 exchanging queens uh, will always be helpful when you are ahead uh, in the game by an exchange it takes i take back he takes the bishop. Again, I can take with the pawn and spoil my uh, pawn structure. But uh, why do that uh, when you have got rook and you can exchange? So I went for the rook exchange uh, and he takes. I take back. As you see, it's a rook versus knight endgame. And rook is pretty strong a piece. Uh, and piece uh, pawn-wise also, we are like pretty much equal. There's nothing ahead that he has got extra pawn there. So we, we are pretty much good in the game. He plays king to f1, we get the rook on d8, the right active squares. Uh, then just going with the king in the center, opponent plays knight to uh, g4. I bring the king to e6, he goes back. I defend the pawn uh, by moving rook. He starts moving his other pawns uh, and I just played pawn to b5 there. Asking him to exchange, he has to and I take back. Here, opponent plays uh, king to sorry knight to f5, and I kick the knight by pushing in g6. Knight goes on a good square, attacking the pawn, but I just save my king, and after he takes, uh, I attack his knight. Knight goes back. Uh, oh, I was thinking that if I take, uh, he can take next move with the folk. I missed that part that he will that that takes come with a check, so he has to first move his king. So the situation would have been same, probably. Of course, uh, 
things can change very quickly. But if we see in the game, I move my king first, which is okay to be safer. I didn't see that pawn, to be honest, though. And then I took on the pawn. Uh, he plays uh, f4 there, and I can do n percent, and I take on the pawn. Uh, remember, always, uh, if your pawn is on the fourth rank, in the fourth rank, it cannot be uh, just uh, not challenged and proceeded directly. It has to be challenged. Uh, that doesn't happen in the game, and that's why I take on the pawn with n percent. Uh, then I just bring the rook in between, asking some troublesome questions to the knight. Knight has only one square remaining there. And that also is taken after I take uh, with the rook. He gets the knight in between to safeguard. Could have, I thought for one second that if I can just take on the knight with the rook, but that can complicate uh, the game a bit. Though uh, I had fox in the chicken coop because uh, meanwhile this king tries to save uh, guard this pawn from promoting this fox uh, can simply go towards the opponent's board and take on the pawns and proceed with the development. So that is another way of winning. But we, I had a simpler move here, which was king to d4, pinning the knight and taking on in the next move. So that's what I do in the game. I take and he resigns because there's no way that he can make a comeback. So lots of learnings in this game, I would say. Karukan defense, very solid. How to play against the London system setup. Uh, things you can do better in the London system setup. Um, then how to use, how to play this end game better when you have got rook versus knight end game. Um, fox in the chicken coop technique. Uh, if you have some extra pawn, just try to push it forward. Distract the king from the safety of, the, uh, of his pawns. And after king goes on to the other side, you go on to the other side and gobble these pawns. So a lot of things which you can improve from this game. Uh, and I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. Press on the like button. Uh, do subscribe to the channel and notify. Uh, click on the notification bell as well so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily. Uh, and that will definitely help you improve your game to the next level. So thanks for watching and your time. Take care. Bye-bye.